Mommy Brainers, and in today's episode of Fully Informed, we're going to be talking about cervical checks. And if you're not sure what a cervical check or exam is, that is when a doctor or an OB or even yourself checks with their fingers to see how dilated and how effaced and a dilation is how open your cervix is and a face is how thin it is. And we're going to be talking about the pros and the cons, what are the risks, is there any risks, and what are the benefits of a cervical check. And as always, I'm not going to be giving you my opinion. I want you to draw your own conclusions from the information that I'm providing for you today. So let's get started. So the first thing I just want to get off the table, get off my chest here, <laughs> is that cervical checks actually don't have any clinical benefits to them. The U.S. Public Health Service actually recommends no routine cervical checks be done before 41 weeks. They are unnecessary and they actually carry more risks and absolutely no pros. So it's an interesting thing that they're done and they're actually done more routinely by obstetricians over midwives, which is an interesting thing to note. Cervical checks can tell you how dilated you are, but the thing is, if you're before four centimeters, it means nothing. <laughs> which means you could walk around at two or even three, three and a half centimeters for up to a month. That's a long time to believe you're going into labor like tomorrow. So it can actually be really discouraging to have your cervix checked, be told you're a certain level, um, even sometimes are told like, oh, I think you'll have your baby in the next three or four days. And then three or four days pass and you're still pregnant and you're like, what the heck? So it's really important to note that Sometimes the biggest cons are emotional or mental cons, and that is definitely a huge con of cervical checks with almost no emotional pros. But there are some clinical cons as well, and that is an increased chance of infection and um, accidental rupture of the membranes, which can even lead to induction, and induction tends to lead to cesarean. So it's important to keep in mind that there are actual cons to a cervical check and cervical checks can be painful. Um, now a cervical check can sometimes feel like a rite of passage like hallelujah I'm almost there. Cervical checks means I'm getting really really close and I'm so excited to know where I am but because cervical checks don't actually tell you for real where you are sometimes the cons just outweigh the pros and this is one of those situations in which the cons really do outweigh the pros once again, this is a total personal choice. You can decline them. They're not necessary. But if you feel like you would like to have one done, that's fine too. Um, but it's important that people know, and I don't think a lot of people know, the truth about cervical checks. So during labor, this can be a slightly different story. Checking your cervix close to the end of labor can help you know when you're in transition. But other things are also good indicators, such as how the mother is behaving and whether she has the urge to push. Cervical checks between, like in earlier labor and even early active labor are optional as well. For some women, they're really encouraging, and for other women, they're really discouraging. So depending on your personality and your experience, you can even decline those. So that's what I have to say about those. If you are getting cervical checks, just remember to read up on it. I'll link um, a couple things below about cervical checks and um, you can do your own research and make your own decisions and I'm very pro making your own decisions. So that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fully Informed. Next time I believe we're going to be talking about induction and maybe not all methods of induction because there are so many methods but probably just Pitocin induction. So stick around for that and I'll see you next time. Bye.